Next slide, please. And from there, we're going to show you um, like a simple Hello World application. We're then going to come back and talk about a little bit more about more slides um, to give you a little bit more insight on how we've built this. And then we're going to answer questions along the way. And I'm going to dive into the chat now while Doug is going to be demoing for you. All right, cool. So it's weird. I have another screen here. It looks like it's taken maybe 10 seconds or more for it to get refreshed. Hopefully, it's not that bad for everybody. All right, so as Uwe said, uh, oh, thank you for joining. Um, I'm Doug Davis, one of the other uh, offering managers or product managers on, on Code, Code Engine. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get to walk through a lot of demos here on Code Engine. And we're going to start with some pretty basic ones at first, just so you get a feel for what Code Engine is all about. And in particular, so you can see the, the simplified user experience that we're talking about. Um, and then hopefully, if we have time, we'll get to some more advanced scenarios, um, showing you some of the advanced features. But let's start with something really simple. So what I'm going to do first is this is the main IBM Cloud page. And first, obviously, let's show you how you can actually find Code Engine. Okay, so you go, basically, I'm searching the catalog here. And my internet's a little slow with all the screen sharing stuff. But obviously, there's Code Engine. So let's go ahead and click on it and go into it. All right, so main page for Code Engine has all the standard stuff you'd expect, um, links for documentation, how to install the CLI. We'll talk about these wizard things here in a sec. So as I said, this is the main page for Code Engine. We have, obviously, documentation, information about how, how to install the CLI, um, you know, list of features and stuff like that. But one thing I did want to talk about down here is the pricing. Um, there is a, or I'm sorry, as Zubay said, uh, Code Engine is a pay-as-you-go model, right? So as your workloads are actually running, you will get charged by the uh, CPU second and gigabyte second for your, for your applications or workloads that they're actually running. <clears throat> Excuse me. And you'll also get charged 50 cents for each 1 million HP requests. Okay. However, we do have a free tier that gets reset every month. And depending on what kind of workloads you run here, this averages maybe about $4 a month or something like that. But you can actually run, I think, most of the demos, if not all the demos that we have on our GitHub repo without actually crossing over that threshold. So it's actually a fairly good you know, little free tier for you to play around with, okay, to see what it's all about. Okay. Um, Let's see if anything else I'm going to want to talk about. OK, so let's go back up here. And there are two things I want to talk about here. One is this, co this concept of a project. So Code Engine is hosted in the cloud. So obviously, it's a multi-tenant environment where we manage everything for you, as Uwe said. Projects are sort of the main uh, resource that you need to understand, of, uh, or the resource model that you need to understand inside of Code Engine. A project is really nothing more than like a folder on your desktop, right? It's just a grouping of things that kind of are related to you anyway, not necessarily to Code Engine, but to you. So for example, if you have um, a big project that you're working on and you have a whole bunch of microservices, maybe some front end things, back end things, batch jobs, all kind of related, and you want them all to sort of live together, not just because of there's a mental grouping associated with it, but also because maybe they want to talk to one another through private networking, right? That's what a project is for, right? You put workloads together, that want to interact with each other seamlessly without having to worry about security because they all get a private network so they can talk to one another. Okay, so think of a project as, as in the Cloud Foundry space, it's like a space, okay? Or, or if you're coming from Kubernetes, think of it as a namespace, right? So it's for grouping things together and it's your level of isolation, meaning if you want to talk to other things and other projects, then you're going to go back out over the internet as of right now. In the future, we may be able to do some private networking, but as of right now, when you talk between projects, you go back out to the internet. So if you want that private networking stuff, put them in the same project. <clears throat> okay. So with that, let's talk about these two little wizards right here. So right here, what you can do in order to start with Code Engine is you can start right off the bat, and we give you some pre-canned information to start with. You can start with either a container image or you can point us to your source code, and we will actually build it for you. Okay? Now, I'm going to start with a pre-built container image, because that's the easiest flow to start with. And we actually point to something that's on Docker Hub, and it's just in the IBM com namespace, and it's called Code Engine. It's just a simple little hello world thing. Okay? So let's go ahead and jump right into this wizard and hit start creating. But I guess I should point out, I could technically change this if I wanted to, and I might do that later for a different demo. So you could put whatever image you want in here. But either way, let's just hit Start Creating and keep going forward. Now, one of the biggest things you need to decide when you start creating a workload is what kind of workload is it? Code Engine 
breaks everything down into two high-level types of workloads. One is application, and the other is batch job. Applications are any, are any type of workload that responds to HTTP requests, or just requests in general, okay? Regardless of how the request is initiated, meaning whether you choose to think of it as a REST call because it's an API microservice you have hosted, or whether you're responding to an event because you think you're a function, or maybe you're a web server, so you're responding to HTTP requests from a browser, it doesn't matter. If you're gonna to respond to incoming requests over HTTP inside your application, then it's an application, okay? And yes, as of right now, that means that when you build your application, you need to stick an HTTP server inside there. Okay, we are working on making it so that in the future you can give us a little snippet of code and then we will wrap it for you with the appropriate infrastructure. But as of today, you have to provide the HTTP server as part of your workload, okay? So applications are HTTP serving things. Batch jobs are different. They don't respond to HTTP requests. Those are more like standalone executables that will execute kind of on demand, and then when they're done running, they exit and go away. Okay, so that's why they're called batch jobs, because that's typically the way batch jobs work, right? Batch jobs are invoked because someone pushes a button, maybe because it's midnight every night, or something like that. Okay, they're, they're kind of more on demand, right? They're not sort of event-driven, HTTP-driven kind of things like applications are. But aside from that sort of HTTP interaction model, they're both kind of the same in the sense that under the covers, they're both just gonna be containers that are running. They both have executables that are, that are gonna get executed, right? It's just one response to HTTP request. And when it's pro done processing HTTP request, it waits around for another one. Eventually, if it doesn't come, it will scale down to zero if you tell us to. Batch jobs, they always go away when the job is done running, okay? So HTTP, not HTTP for jobs. Okay, so with that, let's just go ahead and keep going. Now, I'm not gonna change anything else on this web page because there are other settings I can play with, but I wanna show you how easy it is to actually get going with Code Engine. So all I've done so far is use the default image name, and I'm gonna let it actually use the default application name that it generated for me. Half, half human readable, half a little bit generated, okay? So I then hit start creating, and come on, there we go, okay. So as you can see, it's, it's deploying it. Now let's talk a little bit about what's going on behind the scenes. As actually maybe we haven't talked about yet, behind the scenes we actually do have Kubernetes running. But notice you don't actually see anything much on here that really deals with Kubernetes, okay? And that's actually one of the points of this whole thing. <clears throat> so what's happening behind the scenes is we are downloading the container image and we are setting up all the infrastructure necessary to host it. So if you come from a Kubernetes world, yes, that means spinning up pods, replica sets, deployments, all the things you might expect, as well as things like load balancers, setting up the SSL certificates so you can get a secure connection coming in, and everything else that's necessary to actually host this thing. And it includes autoscalers too, okay? So you can see it's ready now. We have one instance up and running. Let's go ahead and hit open application URL. And let me make it a little bigger. And you can see it's just a simple hello world, prints out some ASCII art, and then it shows some environment variables that are in the container. Nothing too exciting. It's a simple little hello world thing. <clears throat> but I do want to point out, notice that the URL is HTTPS. You get built-in security automatically, okay? So we, you don't have to manage that at all. We do it all for you. Life is good, okay? Now, as Uwe talked about, this is a serverless environment, and obviously we're gonna do things like auto-scaling and stuff like that. So let me go ahead and show you that, okay? What I'm gonna do is I'm going to, come on, there is it, copy the link. And what I'm gonna do is go over here to this little tool that we wrote. Now, this tool is not part of Code Engine. This is just a tool we wrote for demo purposes because it's a lot cooler to see things in UIs on a command line and see a curl command. But basically that's what this thing's gonna do, okay? What it's gonna do is for 30 seconds, it's gonna generate a load against this URL. And not just any load, it's gonna generate 1,200 clients hitting this Hello World application as quickly as it can. Now what's gonna happen, hopefully, if my browser updates fresh often enough, what should happen in a second is, you should, let me go ahead and force it to refresh. My well, internet's a little slow right now. There we go. You can see it's scaling up, okay? Hopefully you can see that it's a nine. So we're already at nine instances, okay? So Code Engine has detected that we have a flood of requests coming in and it needs to scale up because one instance of that application cannot handle all 1,200 clients hitting it at the same time. And you can see all 1,200 clients ran for 30 seconds. 
and we're up to nine instances. Oh, there we go, 10. That's where I wanted to be. Okay, so 1,200 instances, all hitting at the same time, scaled up to 10. Great, it's scaled, great, I proved that. Well, yeah, but there's, a, there's a, something weird about this if you think about it. 10 clients, 1,200, I'm sorry, 1,200 clients, 10 instances. Why did it stop at 10, right? You'd think maybe it should have tried to scale up to maybe something closer to 1,200. Well, let's take a look at this runtime tab. Look at down here under requests, or I'm sorry, concurrency under requests, okay? Because this is an application and it's an HTTP server, we assume that HTTP servers can handle more than one request at a time, because most of them actually can. So we assume by default that each, each instance of your application can handle 100 requests before it starts having issues, either running out of memory or, or something else, okay? And so what's gonna happen is as, as you, the number of requests go up, it isn't until we get close to 100 that we'll start to scale up another instance for you. Okay, now, if for some reason your application cannot handle 100 at a time, maybe it can only handle one, that's fine. You can change this to one. And then we'll scale up on every new concurrent instance. That's completely up to you. But obviously be prepared for a potentially larger bill because you're gonna scale a lot faster. But let's talk a little bit about that larger bill aspect. Let's look up here, number of instances. Min is zero, max is 10 by default, okay? Now we chose to say a maximum value of 10 <clears throat> just so that if you're new to the platform, you don't get a little freaked out with potentially a large bill by doing the experiment I just did, right? We don't want you, <clears throat> excuse me, we don't want you uh, to scale up to a really, really large number unless you're actually prepared for it because we think that'd be a bad user experience. So technically I could change this 10 to something much, much higher into the hundreds range, okay? But we like 10, and that's why it stopped at 10, okay? Because if you think about it, a concurrency of 100 with 1,200 clients hitting it should have scaled up to at least 12. Well, it stopped at 10 because that's what we have here. I could set this to zero and let it go as, as high as it wants, or you could set a much larger number like 200 or so, okay? I like 10, it keeps things in the check. And likewise, <clears throat> in case it's not obvious, minimum is zero. And that means it will scale down to zero if no one is hitting the application. And you can see, because I rambled on long enough, it's scaled down to zero, okay? If for some reason you don't want to scale down to zero, whether it's because you just want things always ready, ready to go in an instant notice, you don't wanna deal with cold start time or some other reason, you can set this zero to anything you want. I personally think if you're gonna set it to something besides zero, one is a good number, because then you have you know 99 other requests as a buffer before you need more, but you can obviously set it to anything you want. You could set it to 10 if you want exactly 10 instances always running or any number you really want in there, okay? Now, you can obviously set CPU and memory on a per instance level if you want, okay? Um, it's completely up to you. We default to one and four because we tell that sounds like a nice round, you know, nice round numbers to us, okay? Now, you can also do things like set environment variables that get obviously set inside the instances as they run. Now. As of this exact moment, the UI is slightly behind the COI, which is why you're a little bit limited in terms of the runtime features you can set to the, to the UI. If you drop down to the COI, which we will do later in different demos, you'll have the full feature, feature set available to you. So it's not just messing with things like environment variables. You'll be able to mess with secrets. You'll be able to mount config maps and secrets as environment variables or map them as volumes, anything you want, okay? <clears throat> much, more, much more flexibility. Hopefully within a couple of weeks, the UI will, will, will have more features for you to play with, but as of right now, that's what you have, okay? And one thing I should point out, because this does trip people up, because not people notice it. By default, we need to know, or I'm sorry, not by default, but we need to know what, ha uh, what port number your application is gonna listen on. And by default, we assume 8080, okay? If your application is listening on a different port, meaning not what is the port number here on the URL to access your application. That's always 80 or 443 for SSL. But if your application itself inside the container is listening on a different port, you can change this number here. Okay. And Uwe, was there a question? I thought I might have heard you trying to speak. No, no, no. Okay, Keep okay, going. good, just, just, just a second, cool. Okay, so that's pretty much it in terms of the application sort of running side of things. Okay, we saw we saw we saw auto scaling even down to zero, and that's really cool. Okay, so that's the basics of hosting applications. 
Now let's go back over here. Let me just think for a second. There's something else I want to show you. No, I think that was it. Okay. So the UI itself, obviously, I showed that to you. I, I like it a lot. I think it's really, really cool. I think they did a good job of simplifying stuff. Everything is where you might expect it to be. And as you saw, I deploy an application with one piece of information, the container image name, and then two clicks. And I got all the defaults, and that was good, right? But one of the things that I've noticed with other products is sometimes the UIs are too good. And what I mean by that is they hide a lot of things from you. And that's all well and good. But the minute you leave the UI and you drop back down to the command line or REST API, things aren't quite as simple anymore. And things get a little more complicated. So what I wanted to do was to show you what the entire demo would look like if I ran it from the command line. Okay, so here's my Hello World application, and here's the command line. Okay, IBM Cloud. Oh, here's a typo in there. It should, there should be a CE there. So it should be IBM Cloud CE app create, give it the name of my application, and then the container image. Okay, think about that. The exact same two bits of information that I gave in the UI is what I give on the command line. We give the exact same user experience, not just from a feature perspective, but from a ease of use perspective. Okay, I'm gonna get the exact same defaults, min and max scale, memory, whatever. Okay, so if I had to change it to the command line, I'm sorry, if I had to change it to the UI, I would have had to change on the command line to get different defaults. But you can see it's just as simple. With two bits of information on the command line, I get an internet facing application that's completely scalable, down to zero, and it's secured. All right, so let me pause here for a second and ask if there are any questions that I should try to answer before I move on to the next demo. No, I think we're good, Doug. Let me, there are a few questions that I think I'll address in the last minute or next minute or two when I'll, I'll take my next two slides. Okay. But I think the rest, I think we're good so far. Okay. Nothing and that back. really jumps out that we should be answering right now. Okay, cool. In that case, I'll hand it back over to you because you're gonna talk about this one.